Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we'll be taking a look at what I have bought off eBay. If you don't know, this is an iMac G4, probably one of the best designs Apple has ever made and of course there's a very iconic advert which went with this computer which I'm sure most people are aware of and I've wanted one of these for a very long time and I managed to find an excellent deal on eBay to get this one. Now before we carry on with this video I will just play a clip for you of the eBay listing. Okay so this is the listing for the iMac G4 as you can see the title is Vintage G4 Apple iMac condition used and I bought it yesterday. I was the only person that bid. My bid was £40 and that indeed one as you can see here, £10 postage, so for £50 I have got this iMac G4. There are only two pictures to look at here. One of them shows it turned on as you can see, so that proves that it does indeed work. Then the second one shows it turned off with its power cable. There the screen looks a little bit smeary, but that's probably just because they've wiped it with something they shouldn't have, but I should be able to clean that just fine. Looking at the overall condition from these not very good pictures, it looks to be absolutely fine for only £50. And as you can see by the font on the iMac, on the font on there, you can't really tell, but that's the old-fashioned font before the switch, so this is an earlier one. They did later ones which had the new style font, but this is one of the older ones which is pretty cool. If we go down to the description, this is literally it. Vintage G4 Apple iMac condition is used in full working order, but minus the box, keyboard or mouse. So that is everything that I know about this item. So it will be definitely interesting to see exactly what model we have got. I'm pretty sure it's a 15 inch looking at that. I know nothing else about it, so it will be very interesting to see the specifications. All right, so that was the listing on eBay. I got this for a very nice price indeed, and overall, it seems to be in a very nice condition. I've given it a bit of a clean because I didn't really want to touch it because there was some grubby stuff on it, so now it is looking a lot more presentable. As I said, very nice design, one of my favourites. And I don't really know much about this particular model. There wasn't any details in the description of the listing, so I guess that is what we can find out today. First, we'll do a walkthrough of the outside of the machine, and then we'll turn it on and take a look at the operating system and the specifications. Now, I'm actually recording this on the 20th anniversary of Mac OS X, so it'll be interesting to see what version this is running. So let's get started. Now, of course, the first thing I'm going to have to talk about is, of course, the screen. This is the main point. As you can see, this is indeed a flat screen. They ditched the CRT, which was on the iMac G3, and went with this flat screen on a sort of swivel arm, and then the base down here. This is the entire computer down here. This is just the monitor. And this one is in very nice condition, the hinge. It just goes exactly where you put it, not loose at all, nice and tight, just like the day someone unboxed it for the very first time. Very smooth, and yeah, this is a very nice example so far, as long as it works, that is. Aesthetically, this is a very nice one. Now, here is the base where the actual computer is. Of course, it's got a G4 processor in here. I don't know which one. There was no details in the listing, but there in our shiny Apple logo, that looks to be in very nice condition. Then in here is our optical drive. Now, we should be able to open that, and in there you can see the drive. I can see it is quite dusty in there, so maybe in a separate video we can clean out the insides because they are probably very dusty. This is probably close to a 17, 18 year old computer. So yeah, it will probably be quite dirty. And look at the return on that. It doesn't just flap up, it does it softly. That is a very nice touch. All right, so this is the rear of the machine. Of course, Apple logo up there. Everything is a lovely 
white colour, it's sort of soft to the touch, it's not the shiny white that they used on the iBooks as well as the white MacBooks. This is a more satin finish, it's very, very nice. Of course you can see the mirrored hinge here, this one is a little bit scuffed and a bit dirty but that should come up quite nicely once I have given this a proper clean. Now let's take a look at the ports which we get on this machine. Okay, so let's start on the right of the machine. We've got our power button, that's actually quite dirty. So you can see someone's been reaching around the back to try and get the button and haven't quite made it and touched all around the sides. That doesn't matter, that should clean up. Here are our audio, audio in, out and all that. We then have our ethernet here as well as our modem. I assume this is 56K. And then as we go along, I will just turn it around there is our power input, that's not just a normal figure of eight, it's one of the cloverleaf style ones which kind of looks a bit like Mickey Mouse. Next we've got two Firewire 400s, three USBs and then a video out. That's either mini DVI or mini VGA, I'll put it on the screen, I always get confused with those. And then finally, we've got a Kensington lock, this is actually a very nice selection of Port. I wouldn't be surprised if this is more than what you get on a modern iMac. Speaking of the modern day iMac, that's what one of those looks like. And there is the iMac G4. Both of these are the smaller display sizes which you could get at the time. This of course is a 21.5 inch and that is a 15 inch. And it's crazy to think that this 2010 iMac still looks like the new ones which you can buy now. Now I have just remembered that the specifications for this computer are probably listed on the base but this is heavy and I can't really be bothered tipping it up I don't really want to snap the screen off so I think we will just wait until we are inside the operating system. I think that's what we're going to do next. I'll connect the power cable, keyboard and a mouse. As I said this is a funny looking power cable but it's designed so it fits flush into the back of the iMac so it does look pretty nice. Okay, this is the keyboard I've plugged in, it's just a cheap and nasty one, but it should work inside macOS, and that is the mouse. I'm going to use my, I was going to say Mighty Mouse, but this is not, it's one of the revised ones, which I think is just called the Apple Wired Mouse. It sort of goes with this computer, I'm not sure if they're from the same time, in fact I don't think they are, but it should work just fine. So now, let's turn on the iMac. Okay, I've got a close-up of the screen. I'm going to go and find the power button. There we go, I can hear it. Nice bong there. Of course, being a power PC, it does take a while for anything to show up on the screen. That's just the way all of these power PC Macs were. And there is our Apple logo. And this screen will take a while to warm up and get to peak brightness. It is looking pretty dim so far but over time it will get brighter which is pretty nice and Mac OS 10 is starting and here we are on the desktop your computer's clock is set to a date before 2001 this could cause some applications to behave erratically that's fine with me all right so the first thing we are going to do is go into the about this Mac section just so we can find out exactly what we have got. So here we are, Mac OS 10 version 10.4.11. So I believe this is the latest version of Tiger. This should be able to run Leopard, but I'll probably just leave it on Tiger unless anyone wants to see an installation video of Leopard. If you would like to see that, do leave a like and subscribe. So the processor we've got is the 1 GHz PowerPC G4. We knew it was a G4, but I didn't know it would be a 1 GHz. And also we've got 512 megabytes of DDR SD RAM. If we go into more information here in the system profiler, we can see that the machine model is PowerMac 6,1. We've got one CPU running at 1 GHz, and we do indeed have half a gig of RAM like already stated. If we go over to the memory screen, it says we've got two DIMMs of 256 megabytes. All right, so I've just found this model on every Mac, 
and it looks like this model came out on the 4th of February 2003 and was discontinued on the 8th of September that same year. This is the same model, 1 gigahertz, and it says down here that, that the standard RAM is 256 megabytes. So I think that this may have been upgraded at some point to double it. And it says the maximum supported is 2 gigabytes. That is unofficial. The official maximum is 1 gigabyte. So maybe we can do a RAM upgrade in the future if that's necessary. So now we know exactly what model this machine is. Let's have a look around the operating system and see if there's anything cool on it. First off, I can see that the hard drive is called Allison's Office. That's an interesting name, I guess. Someone called Allison used this in their office at some point. I guess so, that's what it would mean to me. Let's have a look in the dock. Let's see if I can make this bigger. No, I've just opened QuickTime Player. So here is QuickTime. I'm not really too interested in that. I'm not connecting this machine to the internet for now. I don't really think it is necessary. Let's have a look in the finder. And we've got a different name on here, not Alice. And I will have to blank that out just for privacy reasons. Let's have a look in library. I don't really think there's much to go on in there. In documents, there's nothing really personal. It's all just folders created by different programs, so I think they've probably taken most of their data off here. Let's take a look in iTunes. Ah, we've got something in here. So let's open up the specific iTunes program and take a look in there. Yep, it's not set correctly, but I don't mind. And here we go. We've got some music on here. I don't know if I'm allowed to play this because of Copyright, but I'll have a quick listen. I might let you hear it just for a moment too. I'll turn up the volume. Alright, that speaker is actually pretty decent. I don't know what these songs are and I'm not really too interested, but the speaker seems to be working. Actually, while we were in iTunes, let's see if we can make the optical drive open. So to open it, I would need to do Command E or on this keyboard, Windows E. And the drive has actually opened. I'll get a close up of that and overlay it. Next, close it and it's gone back in very nicely. I guess we can test this drive as well a little bit later when we finish looking through all the files. The final folder on here is just pictures and there seems to be Nothing of much interest in here either. So looking down in the dock, do we have any programs of any interest? We've got Sherlock down here, iCal. Now it's of course just called Calendar in the newer versions of macOS. Old iTunes logo there. iPhoto, that does not exist anymore. We've also got iDVD, another thing which does not exist anymore. We've also got some Microsoft Office things. I'm not sure what year Office this is. We've also got Apple Works 6, Adobe Acrobat 5 system preferences, and of course QuickTime Player. Now there is something in the trash here from 2007, last year's new issues. Now these look to be Excel spreadsheets. I might drag one of those out and see if we can open that in Excel kind of feels weird looking through people's files and here we go this is 2005 2006 different data here i've got no idea what this is about i'm not sure if i should be looking at this or not very interested it always confuses me when people don't wipe computers before they sell them my power mac g5 has got loads of office documents still on and probably some financial records which if in the wrong hands bad things could happen but I've just kept them on there and not really snooped too much so I think that's pretty much all there is to look at in here let's go into applications and see everything that's on here see if there's anything interesting there's some things on here which I don't actually know what they are. I'm going to turn the volume down in case any of these have any sort of loud noises. 
Let's try opening this, whatever this is. I guess this is some sort of a game. I've never played this or even heard of it. I'm not actually going to play this, I don't think. I'll probably just make a fool of myself. I've got no idea what this is, but it looks like copyright 2001 and 2002. So probably from around the time this computer was new. Let's go back into the applications folder, see what else is on here. Okay, so this is where we are going to leave it for this video. It's actually been a week since I started filming this video. And I've spent some time with this thing and I like it a lot. There seems to be no problems with it. Everything is working absolutely fine. And in the future, there will be more videos about this machine. Maybe we'll upgrade the RAM and possibly even put an SSD in it. If that's something that's even possible, I don't know. I'd also like to apologize for this lighting in this last clip. It's just a quick clip that I'm going to throw in at the end of the video. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it was interesting in some way. And if you like this computer and would like to see some more content on it in the future, please do like and subscribe. It really does help. So thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.